Divorced people are reddit. What red flag did you ignore before you got married? Standing around 5 minutes before the wedding starts my mother says if we get in the car and leave now I will never say another word. If all their exes were crazy. My ex-husband's newest ex-wife found this out and reached out to me this morning. My mom's 8 ex-husbands apparently ignored the red flag of how many times she's been married. Poor chap number 9 ignored them too. She wasn't mean. She was honest. It's amazing how these honest people never seem to find nice things to be honest about. Insisting on a wedding dress more than I could afford. I married my first wife extremely quickly. She wanted to get married. I didn't want to break up. The day of my wedding. My friends asked me how I was feeling. And my response was well. I can always get divorced. Don't settle. Marry someone you really. Truly love and can see spending your life wife. That you'll still want to hang out with when you're both old. And fat. And infirm. I'm remarried. And it makes the world of difference. When you're with the right person. You know it. If you don't know it. You probably aren't with the right person. I enjoyed my time away from him more than time with him. I would get super depressed when I knew he was going to be home from work soon. I brushed it off as being antisocial or independent. But now I'm with someone who I'm still excited to see every single day after 7 years and I'm still antisocial and independent. Her family. I thought the rose had grown from shti. I was wrong. It was a shti garden that grew nothing else. Answering for my mom. She was married for 20 plus years. She tried everything. Books. Therapy. Tempting to be the perfect wife. She had dinner ready after work even though he got out at 3 and she got out at 5. She cleaned the house and he played video games. He was abusive to her and I. Even the dog. But once I moved out he took out everything on her. He couldn't divvy his anger up anymore. She started spending more and more weekends at my house. The just before Christmas she left. My dad said she did a horrible thing to him by leaving and that I was betraying him by staying neutral. He can get bent. I haven't talked to him in 3 years. Shaking drops of sweat rolling off me everywhere. Even my legs. Right before the I do. Also telling. When the officiant had us save ours. Dot. And fidelity. Comma. He repeated. Infidelity. Turns out he was cheating the whole time lol. My life is better now. Hi I'm just picturing this asshole slipping that into his vows and thinking aha. Now that I have found that loophole everything I have done is morally right. I'm glad your life is better now. My gut feeling that I was marrying the wrong person. As I was walking down the aisle. Not divorced myself. But as a lawyer I have been a bystander for a few marriage implosions. One thing I know for sure. If you can't sit down at the kitchen table and honestly go over the household finances together. You cannot remain married to each other. Not saying you have to actually do it. But you must be able to. People who can't be open and honest with each other about money aren't going to make it as a married couple. I was on bed rest while pregnant with our son. Due to preterm labor. 5 months. I was told no sx as that could start the labor again. Even though we were living together and engaged. And the child was his. He decided that since I was not putting out. Under doctor orders. That it was not considered cheating to go have sx with a 19 year old. We were married 15 years and he never would agree that he cheated. It was my fault for withholding. He told me. You saved me from being gay. We were best friends with little bedroom chemistry. A few friends who knew her told me don't do it. She's a liar. In hindsight they were totally right. Before we got married. His mom said if you ever get divorced. We will know it was because of him and not you. Huge red flag. And all I thought was wow. What a mean thing to say about your own son. When we were filling out the marriage certificate in the courthouse I remember thinking. Ha. Huh. So that's your middle name. 
I was beginning to come home and I'd be alone. I'd wake up and I'd be alone. I'd have a few days off in a row and she was always out with her friends. The majority of her friends were men. I'd think nothing of it because my wife can have friends that aren't mine and I trust her around men. I don't want to be a controlling husband. She'd always be angry with me about anything. She'd yell all the time. She always talked bad about her own family behind their backs, they were very nice to me. She'd always compare our relationship to her sisters and her husbands, very jealous. SX tapered off into non-existence. Together for almost 10 years. Married for just over one. From the outside we were the textbook high school sweethearts. But no one sees behind closed doors. When we got married. He changed. Suddenly he could demand anything of me because I was his wife. Like an object. Something to be owned. Any problems we had and I tried to fix were met with Ossie oh, so will you married me like this with no effort to change. It took a death of someone very close to me for me to open my eyes and see our relationship for what it was. I asked for space. He went crazy. Locked me in the house for hours. Got physical with me. Faked a suicide attempt. I had completely mentally checked out by this point. And just wanted him to leave me alone. It took for him to be arrested for assault twice and a restraining order for him to get the message and to finally leave me in peace. Suddenly I wasn't controlled anymore. Never settle for someone so selfish and unwilling to work with you. My wife cheated on every single long term partner she ever had. She cheated on her first boyfriend with his brother. And looking back now. She would talk about it almost as if she was proud of it. As if she thought they deserved it. And every guy she ever dated. According to her. Was abusive. Plot twist. She cheated on me as well and when her family found out. She accused me of being abusive. There were several red flags. I just thought she had grown up. Edit. Oh. She is also a pathological liar. From the start. At first lying about things that were not important and that I wouldn't understand why she didn't just tell the truth. Then she started lying about pretty much everything in existence. Almost as if she lived in a private world where her lies were true. Felt like I was going to vomit every time I thought about the wedding. Didn't care anything about planning it. Let my friends pick everything. Including my dress. Sobbed at my bachelorette party. Tried to run away bride at day of wedding. I was 21 and felt trapped. Shoulder listened to my dad. My wife and I are not divorced but my best friend got divorced this year. They divorced over not wanting and wanting to have a child. Talk about this stuff before you get married. If you do not agree on it then end the relationship early. Don't think that you can change her or him. Also. There is a massive difference between I'm not ready for a child yet and I don't want children. My first wife and I both had SZL trauma in our pasts. She was our pet at 15 and got pregnant from it. I was abused by my father and another father figure in my preteen years. We waltzed along the whole dating process and engagement without considering those issues at all. In large part because of our culture we never really sought much in terms of healing before we thought about marriage and ultimately they, the issues caused by the trauma, and our inability to navigate them, led to the complete breakdown of any possible stable relationship because our ideas of what place sexuality had in a relationship were so fragile and unskewed. By the time we realized it at 6 years married and tried to get counseling both sides had so many reasons to just walk away. 75% of which, if you ask for my half of the story. Comma centered around those issues. A couple that took me a while to notice were. 1. He controlled my money and 2. One of my friends is getting divorced after less than a year because of how awful this person was and showed their true colors after the marriage but with subtle signs at the beginning. After he proposed he immediately told her that most of her friends and co-workers, mostly the attractive ones, made him uncomfortable and told her to cut off contact. When she said no he would make threads on reddit and other websites asking for advice and all the anonymous internet people agreed with him and he would show her the posts of random people calling her a bad person for not wanting to cut out close friends. 
he became super controlling and would even ask her to weigh herself so that he could make sure she wasn't gaining weight so that he could stay attracted to her. She finally left this garbage human after a pregnancy scare. She's reconnecting with people too but a lot of those friendships are pretty much lost. If a person demands you to cut off your support system they are not worth it. He always wanted me to take control of things. I thought it was endearing at first but then I found out he's just incapable of doing anything on his own. And I mean anything. One time he called to tell me the catch tea on the floor. I was at work. He asks what to do. Get IT up. What a waste of 3 years Lomeo. Edit. Being lied to. Telling me she was born in Saudi when she was actually born in Texas. Me. I'm dumb. It's okay. People lie sometimes. There was no cardinal sin. We were together 11 years. It was a slow burn. We were both troubled and unhappy in general and I worked on it. I tried tons of things to make changes in my life and my perception. I invited him to try every single thing I did. Together and separately. He made no effort to change and just stayed unhappy. In the end I was a profoundly different person and he was almost exactly the same. The whole time we were together he would dismiss things I said as silly. Everything. House buying and selling suggestions. Directions. How to cook dinner. Reno. Hobbies. Movos and music I liked. SI time stuff. Camping. Family things. I didn't respect myself enough to stand up for myself. Then I learned self respect and goddamn. I ended up isolating myself from him and realized how lonely I was. Edit. I just wanted to add that the hardest thing I have ever done in my life was tell him I didn't respect him or trust him anymore and that I had decided to leave. Lies about small seemingly insignificant things. But often. If they can lie about something small. But often. They definitely can lie when it's something big. Small example. Meet my ex-wife's friend and she introduced her as her sister. No problem with this. Except when her sister needs to borrow money and whatnot. Didn't even find out she wasn't her sister until years into the marriage. Sir. Before today I never heard of a potato. I still don't know what a potato is. Other than some kind of food. I don't know what to tell you. I think mine was more than one. Single mom. Two kids. One of her kids baby daddy was her brother in law. The other one's dad was in prison for grand theft auto. She took I'm gonna marry you someday as a proposal. Faked a pregnancy to get me to propose. Cut herself every time she didn't get her way. Would constantly belittle me in front of her family. Didn't have friends. Opened a credit card in my name so she could eat pizza for lunch while I ate jalapia flavored pickles because that's all that was in the house. I was violently ill the day of my wedding. That's a FCK load of red flags. She was dumber than a box or rocks. But she was hot so my 21 year old brain shut the shti down. Looks are fleeting but dumb is forever. We weren't married. But I used to look past how her family communicated by shouting at each other. In the beginning. She would complain about them to me and I didn't understand why she kept in contact with them. The difficulties came when she then started to treat me the same way and I realized that that was just how she defined family. That all the excuses he made for everything sounded like bullshit because they were bullshit. I should have trusted my gut. He was obsessed with my high school grad photo. Turns out he had a thing for 18 year olds. So many things. 1. My parents and friends couldn't stand her. We broke up once before we got married. Everyone was very relieved. Then very disappointed when we got back together. 2. She was very jealous of anything I accomplished. It was me versus her in her mind. 3. She blamed me for her shortcomings and situations. Never took responsibility for things happening in her life. Regardless of her power to change them. Those are the big ones. There were quite a few others. We've been divorced for going on 2 years now. Couldn't be happier. 
I was concerned that he had a disproportionate preoccupation with the fact that I was young. I didn't ignore it. I even addressed it. You know I'm going to get older. Right? I won't always be this young. I won't make sure that's not why you want to marry me. I have no interest in being a trophy wife. I wanted to be sure sure that wasn't the reason he was so attracted to me. He assured me that it wasn't. He's 7 years older. Maybe it wasn't simply the fact that I was young. But I do think it was the fact that he felt he had the upper hand through life experience and earning power. And that he should make all the decisions. He didn't really want a grown woman. 7 years. 2 kids. And endless support and compromise from me later. He divorced me when I was 30. He dates women 18-20 years younger than he is now. Thank god I never gave up on securing my education and professional standing. His loss. We were very young. He was a liar. He was a cheat. He controlled all of our income and became physically abusive. He also gave me NST and when I left him he threatened to kill himself. I was such an idiot. Ugh. The fact she wasn't a very nice person. I'm more careful these days. Little late to the party but here we go. First things was I could never do enough to make her happy. I did all the housework and yard work. Nothing was enough. I wasn't allowed to be tired because my job was sitting at a desk for 9 hours a day staring at a computer screen. Second thing we both had childhoods where neither of our fathers were in the picture. We talked about kids and she asked if I could be a stay at home dad. She made about 2. 5x what I did. I told her yes and she told me she couldn't respect me. Third thing she was still attached by the cord to her mom. The money we received as wedding presents went to her mom so she could keep her house and not move in with us. There is more but I'll leave you with two quick stories. One time she threatened to kick me out of the house because I ate her cookies that hadn't been touched in about a month. The other thing is she told me she wanted a divorce over text. Thank god we were only married for 6 months before filing. Looking for a job for 3 months turned into 3 years. Then she asked to open the relationship with granting me the privilege to still pay for everything. Lies. He'd come clean in the most apologetic way with tears and begging me to forgive him. I forgave him because they weren't lies about anything about our relationship. They were insecurity. The whole relationship he would trickle truth and gaslight for the same reasons of insecurity. I'm going to speak for others. I was the other man in her previous marriage. Haha. <laughs> My first wife married the guy she cheated on me with. Color him shocked when she cheated again and again and again on him. What a dumbass. But at least I got to move on to the most amazing woman ever. The fact that she had been accepted into the Air Force after fighting so hard to be accepted into it. Only to lie and tell me she had been rejected. It tore me up because I invested time and emotion in supporting her. Took me some time to get over that one. Why did she lie about getting accepted into the Air Force? She became overwhelmed by even the tiniest setbacks. Someone said something marginally rude to her at work and she had to take the rest of the shift off because she was fuming so much. For example. Turns out she was that way with everything. I married a 35 year old man who was still living with his parents. I thought. Oh. What a sweet son. Who values closeness with his family. Nope. He was a lazy. Codependent man child who spent all his money on food beer and video games not divorced but i lived with my boyfriend and we dated for years so the breakup felt like a divorce anyway he was perfect at first then i noticed he would get really angry at small things when driving if anything happened that he felt was unfair he would roll down the window and scream looking back i don't know why i ignored that when we started to live together that anger showed. If I did anything wrong he would get angry. Accidentally stood in front of the TV for 2 seconds. Angry. Didn't rinse a dish properly before putting it in the dishwasher. Angry. Used something of his without permission. Lotion. Toothpaste. Amen. Ect. Dart. Angry. 
He never stood up for me in front of anyone. Family. Friends. Randus. Never. My mom knew the guy she was marrying was gay and yet she did it anyways. Had a kid and divorced. For all the people here who have gone through this I'm so sorry. I have a quote I heard not too long ago, Bojack Horseman, that feels like it applies here. When you look at someone through rose colored glasses. All the red flags just look like flags. This thread is teaching me that couples counseling when problems first start to arise. Married or not. Is a great move. He cared far more about his own happiness than mine. I grew up with a mentally ill narcissist mother. And a dysfunctional family. So my normal meter was way off. It was better than my home life. And I had no idea how unhealthy it was.